and welcome back on adobelive.com. Hello, Suzanne. Hi. Suzanne Helmich from uh, Helmich. Did I say anything that Helmich. right? Helmich. Yeah. Helmich. Helmich. <laughs> I've been training all <laughs> night, like Helmich. Yeah, it's a complicated one, it's but a... Helmich is fine too. Yeah? Yeah. But I want to say it the right way. It's hard to depict the right <laughs> way though. Anyway. Welcome back to the Adobe live stream uh, here on adobelive.com. If you're watching this stream on any other platform and not on adobelive.com, please come over because that's where all the cool stuff is happening. Uh, that's where you can uh, access the chat. You will also be able to access the replays because yes, we are mm -hmm. recording everything and all the replays will be available for later viewing. If you've missed uh, Suzanne's stream from yesterday, for example, you will be able to watch it again if you so wish. There's also another cool feature there um, that allows you to, uh, to see the um, uh, the schedule for the upcoming shows. So, uh, so we see, for example, that uh, that under schedule we are, you know, we are now live with Suzanne. But the next will be Sebastian Hu and then Therese Larsen for the night shift from uh, 10 p.m. to midnight here in Paris time. And then for day three tomorrow, the whole program again. All right. Uh, so the schedule is really, uh, really important to view here on adobelive.com. And also there are now, just notice Michael added another button. There is now two buttons to get to the Monk contest. And basically the Monk contest is uh, as a contest that allows you to use Kyle's brushes that he created, especially uh, based on the brushes that Edvard Munk actually used for painting his famous Scream painting. And they're free to get. And they're free. They're free yeah. to download. You can use them. They're, they will be free for you uh, forever. You know, you can install them in Photoshop CC and also in Photoshop Sketch. Um, uh, Adobe Photoshop Sketch on your tablet devices. It's available for iOS and, uh, and uh, Android. So make sure to download the brushes. And then there is a competition going on. Uh, what we ask you to do is to create your own interpretation of the screen. Uh, because apparently Edward, yeah, Edward um, uh, didn't actually like create the screen right away. He like had an iteration of uh, three to four paintings until he came to the, the final version that we all know uh, because it's so much inside of our brains. Uh, yeah. So it, uh, it's so part of our, DNA right now yeah. and uh, basically uh, there will be a winner and the lucky winner because uh, that's uh, that's really gonna be a very lucky and talented winner there's gonna be a, a jury and uh, Suzanne is actually part of that jury and all of the speakers during this uh, um, this um, uh, digital painting and illustration stream are on the jury panel so Suzanne, um, uh, Kyle, Sebastian and Therese and Michael will be on the jury. Um, and the winner will get uh, quite a few things. 6,000 euros in cash, one year Creative Cloud subscription, 100 stock Adobe stock credits, um, uh, a ticket to Adobe Max, which is our largest creativity conference uh, that will be held in uh, uh, Las Vegas this year. So the winner will get a ticket to Max and uh, the flights and the travel and everything included. And uh, last but not least, and which is my favorite part oh, of yeah. the competition, the is that the winning uh, illustration will be exhibited together with uh, Edvard Munch's Scream in the Munch Museum in Oslo. And there will also be a trip for the winner to go to Oslo and, uh, and present their work there uh, yeah. next to, uh, to the original paintings. So participate. It's right here on adobelife.com. There is now two buttons. Enter the contest and another one that says Munch Contest. Enter, download the brushes, Feel free to use them as you wish and uh, enter the contest. And where do they find them? Shall we shall we point? Like is it in that corner? Or? Um, there. It's it's over there. Yes. Okay. There. Right there. Uh, there. Like, okay. I need to go like in front of you. There. there. Yeah. It opens yeah. a separate window, right? So yes, you don't it opens leave a separate stream. separate window. You will not leave the stream. Just do it. And if you do it from uh, your iPad or your Android tablet, you will be able to access the same brushes from there. I tried it this morning. I just clicked on the brushes and it told me, do you want to install these into uh, Adobe Photoshop Sketch? And I said, hell yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. And, and they work great. Okay. Um, all right, so Suzanne, yesterday 
we uh, we worked on two separate projects and yeah. maybe we want to go over them again and maybe while we do that you can just quickly explain to our viewers uh, who you are and what you do and uh, who is Suzanne? All right, I will. <laughs> um, I'm from the Netherlands. I am a concept artist and illustrator. I worked on some pretty fun projects like Horizon Zero Dawn, which is a recently released PlayStation game, as well as the Hitman game, the last one. Hmm. I think there are so many games named Hitman these days, but the last yeah. one at least. Okay. <laughs> and I work for Magic the Gathering, which is a, a card game. Okay. I also play it, so it's double the fun that way for me. And most of the time I actually spend on my own book lately. Mm -hmm. So I've been writing it, it's a fiction book, and every page will get an illustration. So it's quite a big project, a little bit insane. But mm -hmm. uh, I like to make my own life. Will there be a text as well, or is it? Yeah, yeah. Yes? So it's uh, like a, a real novel, completely. Okay. Written, and uh, yeah, all it's right. all illustrated. Do you, want, yeah, you have? Yeah, I think you have a website for that, right? With yeah. some of these illustrations. Maybe we want to look at those. I'm just gonna switch over to your screen. Here we go. We have a little. There we go. Ah. So here we were yesterday. This just shows a bunch of the illustrations I already did that I showed to the public because I got mm -hmm. some of them still a secret. Oh, I don't okay. Wanna, don't want to share everything yet. It's got some information about the main characters. No spoilers today. No spoilers. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if you're interested, uh, feel free to hop to caldera.com. Mm -hmm. so Let me put that in here. Uh, Can I not? With, I... A, with a Y. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Oh, oh, Evil Cerise uh, actually was faster than me. Thank you, Evil Cerise. So that's that's kind of my baby right now. This, okay. this project and the illustrations I'll be working on during the stream are actually part of that project. So this new one, let me just click off the references. There we go. I love the one that that we had like on the on our background. Ooh, it looks yeah. like we're in some sort of a. Like we're reporters and something is happening behind us. <laughs> <laughs> the drama unfolds. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening there? Uh, one of the main characters is going through an angry grout. So oh. they are about to maybe fight him. So oh, he's okay. being very brave to walk through them to save some of his okay. friends. And the main character is the one right behind you. Uh, there are actually four main characters and that is one of them. Okay. Indeed. Yeah. All right. That's why it gets all the light to make him pop out of the illustration. Exactly, and now I have to achieve the same sort of effect for this guy on the ground here, which is another one of the main mm -hmm. characters. So, but this, this perspective is completely different, whereas the other one we see from the top down, so we get this really high angle. And I wanted to show this from below, because this character is in this, how would you say that, the low state of his mm -hmm. character development. He's sad, he's, he's not doing well. <laughs> That's what I wanted to show. So can we just show maybe with what you started yesterday, just yeah. by maybe hiding the layers that we worked on yesterday? Oh, there. Yeah. That... There's even further. So here, oh. this is how it started originally. I, I just make really simplified, uh, I always call them naked man dolls, because mm. that's what they look like. Uh, that is just to plan everything out. So before I go into any tiny detail, like drawing people's eyes or noses, I want to make sure that the composition like this works, that there's no weird tangents going on. Even though I'm pretty sure there will be some tangents. Mm, you always okay. discover that later. Hi Titus, I feel like I know you. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, I go over it with cleaner lines. Like so. Switch these. And all the faces that you see in this drawing are actually referenced from people from my Facebook friends. That I have a, a whole range of different people on there, different ages, different nationalities, and I always ask them, like, please send me reference photos mm -hmm. of your faces, because otherwise I will just keep drawing, like, Chris Pratt and all the <laughs> other Chris's, like we say yesterday. All the Chris's of Hollywood. So I want a little bit more diversity and, yeah, 
Well, Cecil, where can I get the free brushes from? Go to adobelife.com to watch the stream and down below on the right, there's two buttons. One's for, yeah, they're both, they both link you to the, uh, the Monk competition. And uh, the first thing you can do there is to actually download the brushes free for you to use. Yeah, because some people might be watching directly from YouTube, right? Hmm. We should just drop in the link now and then to the, uh, to the live. Yeah, page. come over to adobelife.com. Yeah, it's, it's the same, there. it's the same stream. Yeah, <laughs> you can still chat, right? Absolutely. So, absolutely the same. And I'm here for any type of questions. If you're an artist that mm -hmm. wants to break through with illustration or concept art or have stuff you struggle with, I'm here for the next two hours. All right. Let's get going. Yeah, I'm gonna hop over now and then to look at the chat. This is a really big wake up, by the way. Yeah, I'll, po I'll, I'll point them out for you, don't worry. Titus just said it's a. It's, you guys have an awesome setup going. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah. Is it is it awesome? Yeah. Yeah. I need this. <laughs> oh, the background. Yeah. Yeah. The green screen thing. And then the main thing, of course, is the lights. And these. Yeah. These oh yeah, ones. that helps. Yeah. And the GoPro thing is cool. Mm. I see a question though. I think um, mm. yesterday Suzanne talked about using a few oh. colors, but it seemed. More does she have a palette created before? Uh, well, in this case, I'm actually doing a type of palette that I've done before, so it's easier for me. I've done a whole bunch of images with Torch Fire, like the one uh, we had in the background earlier. But whenever I have to do something I've never done before, I start off with doing lots of research. And one of my favorite things is to watch a lot of movies to which I think, like, oh, they might have the right sort of setting or color palettes. So for this type of color palette with Torchfire, the best type of movies to look for is stuff like Indiana Jones and the old mummy movies. And just get yourself some screenshots from there and, and make studies and, and try to use that whole eyedropper or color picker to discover what color is what. Let's see this one. This is even easier. Because the idea with torch fire is, is that wherever you go with this eyedropper, if you look at this region here, it will always stay between red, orange, and yellow. Even the stuff that reads as blue. And that's because it's a limited light source. It's a warm light source, so it will only give accent to warm colors. And if you had a blue light source, for instance, which doesn't really happen often, mm. not in natural situations, the same thing happens, all the cold colors will pop out. And after she's asking, historically many artists have said that hands are the most difficult thing to draw. Do you struggle with hands? Sometimes. Mm. Like I have my on and off days. <laughs> That's with everything really. But there's a way to simplify hands. You have to put them in boxes. I, I put everything in boxes, like the whole figures, the environments, everything. You have to reduce it down to a simple shape that you can understand. And the hand works a particular way. I want to show it like this, but I think it's better if I draw it out. Which one I do here? Because I have space here. So if you want to draw a hand, start out with the box. That could be the palm of the hand. Now it doesn't have to be like a perfect square box like that. It's even better if it's like slightly tilted outward like this. So what you want for all the fingers is to do this. Even with the thumb, so you can make it a lot longer. Something more to the side. There. So one finger starts there, the other starts there, and so on. Just so that they fit the square. The thumb obviously is a little bit on the side. Now this will be the spots where the fingers end. Just to make it really simple, like sausages. <laughs> this is technically what you get. And this is without all the complicated joints. That's just a second step. So as long as you remember that, you will get the proportions right. You can make it a little less steep as well as long as they are in a curve and related to one another. Now when I look at my own hand, there are a little bit of exceptions because 
my pink is just a lot shorter than my ring finger. I don't know what it's like for you, with your hands, but... Oh yeah, you have that too. Yeah, some people have the fingers like way closer to one another. Yeah. It's, like, it's like toes, you know? Oh, yeah. You have toes that, that go like that. You have the toes. There's people where the second toe is bigger than the big <laughs> toe. So there are some, some slight exceptions. So it doesn't actually matter how you put the hand, like if you make a claw or, I don't know, whatever you had in mind, like a spell or a fist, there will always be that curve. If that helps you and answers your question. Wow, that's really helpful, thanks. <laughs> Let's see, shall I work further on the screen or on this one? Because the thing with the scream is, we, we did this yesterday, from there, without any reference. We yeah. were just looking at our own faces or just feeling mm -hmm. our own faces, like what is going on, what muscles are being pulled. But what if I pull out some reference right now and maybe get some actual knowledge mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe I got really close. Or maybe I've done something horribly wrong. <laughs> and way to go, there's actually something called Adobe Stock. Right? All right, let's... Let's have a look there. Now, what would I search for? Screaming man or just screamy? It's, it's, you probably get, you know, like, yeah, you get, oh. I would say man. Uh, maybe a woman works as well. Even though the bone structure is usually a little bit different. If you want to have the mm -hmm. stereotypical man versus the stereotypical woman this one's pretty good so what do you do do i buy it yeah download let's it. license it i mean oh. did, look at it on on you know just download it for a second and then yeah. let's have a look at it and if we like it we're gonna reward the creator of that image oh there's a lot of reference in there yeah this is pretty good some are a bit, a little bit more genuine. Mm. Like I believe that that guy was making noise, whereas mm -hmm. that woman is probably going like, like <laughs> noiseless. Oh, but they all have different ways of doing their mm -hmm. eyebrows. See how that guy has his mm -hmm. eyebrows down and up. But what they all have in common is that they squint. See, so when uh, yesterday yeah. when mm -hmm. we were doing yeah. it ourselves, we 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 made our yeah. eyes bigger, but maybe that's not the way to do it. I'm gonna make those eyes tinier. I'm gonna copy what I did yesterday and work on top of it. New scream. See if I can improve it. All right. So you see a little little cloud there. Mm -hmm. We can like if you click on it. Yeah. We can. Uh, oh wait. Let's just. Oh. Oh, then it goes. No. Separate. Okay. No. No. Let's go into the into the menu and just license it. Where do we see it? Here. Oh. And where is it? Da, da, da. Where is it? Did we license it? No, it, no, because it still has the... Um, wait. Where is the... Ah, there we go. From here, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> see, this is a first time for me. But this is great. Where do we do this? Caliber? No, 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 no. Uh, did you select the image? Okay, and now from from this, from this, yeah. yeah. Oh, or maybe that one. No, that's just another way of viewing them. Oh, okay. And maybe if you control click on it. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. Maybe it's this symbol. Like maybe this is download and that is... No, 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 bad. no. No. Discovering. Ah. That is interesting. On the pick itself? No, no. In InDesign, it's, it's easier because you have the little cloud icon. Oh, yeah. If you control click on this one, for example. No, it just no. has the layers things. Hmm. 
I'm pretty sure it probably has to do with a window that I don't have open. Yeah, let's let's just go go ahead and I'll I'll figure it out. Yeah. Answers. Let's see what tablet is she using? Uh, this is a super big Wacom. I think it's one of the newer models because it's got touch. It doesn't have the remote thing though, so it's not the the newest. But it has a remote. Yeah, the what? newest one is yeah? a remote. Yeah, oh. with the circle and all oh. the things. Yeah. Right click on picture. So, really? It seems to be. I'm just gonna go go ahead and start painting. Where to put them? Although the ones I used yesterday, the moon brushes are really good. I think I already had a favorite, was it this one? Medium flat. Oh, such a good brush. What flat? See, so the eyelids come really, they got really, really thick. Sorry, when I do control click on on the image in the library, mm -hmm. control click, it says license image. Hmm. Control click. click. Ah, there we go. <gasps> yeah. Ah. What did I do wrong? License image. I thought I was going crazy, but... I did it. My bad. And now, uh, license, okay. Oh. And now, auto automatically... Yeah, it's thinking, it's thinking. It's thinking, and yeah. boom. Now we have, we have just what? paid a photographer, and... We have licensed the image. Win, win, win. We are out of the gray area. <laughs> yes. Doing right. <laughs> now it almost looks like he's about to sneeze. Ah, they're blaming. They're blaming me for not knowing what was happening. <laughs> but I did. <laughs> I've told everyone it was my first time using that, so it's it's totally my my mistake. Not clicking the stuff right. So the upper eyelids. There's a bunch of things going on with that guy. They're going square. That guy, it's still circular. So I think it has to do with if someone has excess skin above their eye or not. Mm. I think this character usually has I'll make his eyes square. Gotta keep the continuity right so they he ends up looking like the same person in all my images. Gabe is asking what what do you think is the most crucial part during a painting? the planning stage in the beginning definitely because if you skip anything in your planning stage any of the elements then uh, you'll encounter a lot of problems later on so you want to do as most of the problem solving before you even get started now I could make a list of all the things you need to think about to help you out number one composition now I'm gonna make this bigger Probably gonna have a lot of spelling mistakes. <laughs> All right. Secondary, you need to know your lighting. You need to know the story you want to convey, and you need to know your color palette. Or was, is that with double L or double T? Palette. That's fine. Yeah. 
Now, as secondary things, you want to know... I mean, it, it all depends on what you're drawing. So if you're drawing an environment, you, you need to know different things than if you're drawing a character. Now, if you're drawing a character, for instance, which is stuff I do, you need to know uh, the clothing they're wearing and the functionality of it. So let's say you're doing concept art and you're designing a character. In that case, you also need to know about what is their fashion. Completely wrong. But you know what I mean. Or, ooh, I'm just gonna do it like this. What's their job? <laughs> I can type that. Second of all, are they rich or are they poor or somewhere in between? So how much money do they have to spend on what they're mm. wearing? So how would I call that? Um, Their status. Status. Yeah, that's a good one. Their status. And their social environment. With that I mean, are we, are we thinking about the Middle Ages? Is it modern day? Is it in the future? That. What is the fashion? Because if you want to be true to history, it gets really complicated. You have to do really, really good research. I was actually just today in the Museum of Armory. Have you ever mm. been there? No. In this one? Oh, it's great. I love that sort of museums. Whenever I visit a country, if they have such a museum, I go there and I think this is absolutely the biggest one I've mm. ever seen. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, they I'm let you take. Them. They let you take pictures. Yeah, yeah. I asked. I was allowed with my phone oh, without a flash. Yeah, yeah. I won't damage anything with light. Uh, but these are all things that are very important. And if you tend to forget that stuff, what mm. I used to do is I would write it down on a post-it and put it on my mm -hmm. computer screen. So I check it. Yeah, it's like a brief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same for movies. When you start writing out a scene for a movie, they want to know is it interior or exterior? They want to know who's in it, what they're doing, and the time of day. That's how every scene starts in the script. So I forgot to mention in my intro, I did film school. So oh. most of my <laughs> art is always based around how you would do it in a movie. Gabe says thank you to answer in such a detail. Ah, of course. Eyebrows down on the inside. So I like what's going on with this guy's forehead. There's like a, a dent forming, like a V-shaped dent in the middle. And not all of them have it. Like some is more like a W or an M. Yeah, that's definitely a W with that guy. Wow, but to have your artwork hang in a museum next to a master painting. Mm. How about that, huh? I wish I had that opportunity, but I'm the judge. I love the <laughs> judges, so... And yes, and judges can't participate. You know what my mom told me yesterday? Use a fake name. Yeah. <laughs> she also said, oh, just use my name. It's like, yeah, great mom. So if <laughs> I win my, my own contest thing, then you will be forever memorize the museum and not me yeah enjoy the free brushes <laughs> yeah they're great as well i'm using one of the brushes right now one of Kyle's brushes yeah one of the oh. moon brushes oh, wow. okay really nice blended brush and for those who download it and get confused because you can't find it in this menu that's because they are in the presets menu, which looks like this. It's got those two little tools, mm -hmm. tool presets. Now, if you don't have this in your Photoshop at all, then you go to Window, and you will find it here. There you go. You click that, it opens. Which is very, very important. 
Mikael is asking, and is asking me, I guess, uh, anything new in coming for digital painting and future Photoshop updates. So let me ask you this question. What is it that you would like to have in Photoshop that's missing now? Someone mentioned something yesterday that I thought was really good, mm -hmm. and that was to have in, like make a select, be able to make a selection in your own brush back or maybe color mm -hmm. code it, so you are really quick to find your mm -hmm. favorite brushes. Yeah. So more like brush color. organization. Yes, okay. just like we have with layers. Mm -hmm. That would be great. What do you guys think about that? Is that a good idea? Hey Drew from Seattle. What time is it in Seattle? Wow, hey. it's pretty early in Seattle. I just got back from Seattle. It's there. Do you like it? Yeah, it's a nice place. Mm. I, uh, I took a, a bus boat ride there. So it's one of those buses oh, that go into the, the water. The duck. Yes, thing. the duck. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, VLD, it's not that the bot hates you, it's that uh, only mods can post commands. They got all the power. Can you imagine if anybody could co post commands in our chat? <laughs> that would go nuts. <laughs> Change the color palette to the circle and centered triangle version. Is that a hmm. command? No, um, in the the color palette in Photoshop, mm -hmm. like, what what version is it now? Is it uh, is it not? Can you not have the uh, the circle and the triangle in it? As the no, in, in the color palette in the color panel. Do you have that Isn't there? Yes. So now it's like this. But can we not choose another? The sliders, slab sliders. No, the brightness cube. No, no, no. Oh, well, maybe this. I see what you mean, though. Um, yeah, there is this, this plugin that I got at home, which is made by someone mm -hmm. outside Photoshop. I think mm -hmm. it's called Cooler. And you get the triangle and like a full circle, and it's really mm -hmm. handy. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh. maybe that's also but a thing that Photoshop could do. Cooler is from Adobe. It is? Yeah. People lie to me. <laughs> see, I use that. It's great, but it's it's not in here, is it? Or maybe it's something you can switch off I, on, I believe. Extensions. Oh, it's colored. It's called color now. We changed the name. There we go. Mm -hmm. Which is also great for limited palettes. So mm -hmm. if you are working with torch fire stuff. You can create your own palettes through here. Yeah, and there's also here like several ways of exploring also various palettes. There's you can search for colors like skin tones or uh, I don't know foliage or things like that. Yeah, you can also save your your color palettes mm. as well, so you can return to them later. This themes super nice. And you can do complementary colors and stuff yeah. as well. Right? That's there go. yeah. So there's try it, which is a sort of complementary colors in a way. There's actually complementary because complementary colors are always uh, on opposite ends mm -hmm. of the color wheel, whereas these are the triangle. And Eva Suri says there's also a, a HUD color picker you can bring up via a shortcut. So a HUD color picker. Uh, Photoshop is so deep. Let me see. You always keep finding new things over here. 
just when you think you know the program to the fullest, you 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 hear other people talk about it. Yeah, so many people tell me, oh, I'm going to do the certification exam in Photoshop. It's so it's going to be so easy because you know I've been doing working with Photoshop for ten years. It's going to be so easy. Oh yeah. And then they fail miserably. Oh. And then they then they start learning. <laughs> I've actually been learning how to use uh, InDesign lately because hmm. oh. that's uh, how that's I do for the layout book. for yeah. Me. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is going to be so hard, but a lot of hmm. it is, is very intuitive. It's very similar to Photoshop in that way. Plus, I searched, uh, I searched for the tutorials. I think, mm -hmm. uh, is it Terry doing the tutorials for that? Um. Yeah, I mean, he's got many tutorials. Yeah, I think I saw his tutorials on it too, which helped. First organization or a riot. See? Mm. Limo Leo is with me. <laughs> That's easier for you to draw a male or female character? Ooh, I think a male, male characters. I think that mostly has to do on what I'm mostly interested to draw. I think. I mean, you find very often the girls that you see drawn a line are drawn by dudes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and girls themselves and usually draw dudes. So yeah, there is a test exam for the Photoshop certificate. Actually, when you when you find the information about the certification exam, there is actually like a whole um, like like tryout thing. So you get a feel of how the questions are asked, and uh, it's all multiple choice. And then there is a percentage that you need to attain to actually pass. Oh, there we go, Cordell. For Photoshop 5.5, I failed the A certification by one question. Oh. That's all it takes to fail. Yep, yeah, it's a machine and uh, machines don't forgive, even <laughs> for one question. Oh, this is already bad. So Robert, which is the main image, the crowded man or the shouting man? It's, it's two different images that yeah. we're working on and we're like, we'd like spend some time during the, during the two hours working on the screaming face and some time working on the uh, on the other one was the uh, was the crowd. Yeah, I do that at home as well, just to get a fresher look when you hop back into mm -hmm. image. I mean, at this stage, I don't need a fresh look yet because well, there's still so much blending to fill mm -hmm. in. But when you're in a stage where you think you're done, you're like, oh, I want to post this online and share this with friends. It's usually mm -hmm. wise just to keep that and look at it the next mm -hmm. day, maybe go over it before you're too hastily. And that's usually just more of a memo to myself because. I've done it plenty of times where I post it online and the world saw it and I end up thinking, oh, but that thing, I need to change that. And, oh, how could I not see that? Do you want to keep yourself from doing that? Because when you stare at an image way too long, you stop seeing a lot of the mistakes. Well, Cassandra says, I can't draw, I can't draw guys to save my life and I'm a girl. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, you know, it takes practice, practice, practice. Well, Amanda, that's a good question. It would be ideal if we would get an in-depth syllabus for the uh, Adobe Certification Exam, um, like the one for the uh, Adobe Certified Associate. Um, but basically, the Adobe Certification Exam um, uh, is actually it's in it's in the help. If you go, if you visit all of the help pages um, uh, of Photoshop. You know, it's all divided into sections and things, and these are basically the sections that uh, that you will be interrogated on. So, what happens if people do have the certificate? Is that something you put in your portfolio? Well, you know, for me, it was very important uh, when I got certified. I got certified in Acrobat, and Illustrator, and Photoshop, and InDesign. To, uh, and for me, it was important um, to certify myself, to say, okay, I know what I'm talking about, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and because it means that I actually looked at the applications in depth, and uh, so I, it made me feel good. But then, of course, there's also benefits, like you can put the little Adobe Certified Expert um, 
uh, logo on your business card or on your website. Yeah. And uh, and that I must say uh, gave customers a lot of um, uh, trust because they knew that I knew what I was doing, you okay. know, and that I was not losing time. You yeah. Know? That I was not losing their precious time, like trying to figure out a layout or an illustration <laughs> or things like that. So for that, that was useful. Does it give you the right answer when you're wrong, so you learn from it? No. Oh. No. Okay. No, no, the exam is really, you sit in a room and uh, somebody from the training center opens the program for you. And there's cameras in the room as well, so you know, you can't like be cheating on your iPhone or things like that. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's pretty serious. And then you have to answer all the questions, you have a set amount of time. Yeah. It's all multiple choice. And some questions make you just go crazy because you think, you know, there's actually two answers to that. <laughs> but maybe there's only one. I don't know. And uh, it's like uh, high school all over mm. again. That feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, that was the exact feeling. Yeah. Let's see. How do you open the color wheel for choosing the color palette again? Um, so if you don't already have it in here, because it looks like the circle, would, it has this, it makes me think of sci-fi movies somehow. Like you're looking at stars in the sky, the way they are mapped. <laughs> but you go to uh, Workspace in Window, you go down, and there's something called Extensions. And there you click it. Color tools. So Window, Extensions, Color Tools. Yep, that's right, Cordell. There are a few questions that have multiple correct answers. And there is also those questions that say all. <laughs> you know? ah. Like all, all of all the of above. The above you yeah. Know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's also some graphical questions. I think you need to point a specific area of the interface. But there's so many things to know about, like, um, like color, like uh, also um, color management and things like that so it's not just you know like using layers and uh, and panels in Photoshop it goes a little bit more into depth I feel like I would probably fail that test mostly because I've only ever used Photoshop for painting mm -hmm. so there are so many other things you can do with it that mm. I've never explored because I don't really do photo retouching anymore. that's right I don't think anybody uses the Photoshop to its full extent no just like nobody uses Microsoft Word to its full extent or you know Anything there's like so many that. things Oh, I do, I do make photographs in raw format and then when I open them in Photoshop there's this whole selection of things mm -hmm. I can do with sliders, which is great. Yeah, it says I or none of the above. That's right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, also what I started doing is have all my my staff uh, in my agency actually do the certification exams. And uh, yes, because that way I knew they knew what they were doing. <laughs> and what happens if they don't know? They do it again. <laughs> oh, okay, so they don't instantly get fired. No, no, <laughs> I never fired anybody except you know when I closed the agency to come to Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> reference. There's a lot mm. of people in the art community that are really shy of using reference because there's this weird ideology that artists don't use any reference. That's simply not true, right? Yeah. I mean, even in the past, people used to draw from life, always. You know, yeah. That's why in movies, we always see the painter with the subject sitting. You know. And still, if you if you draw people, I really recommend having a mirror on your desk so you can, in a way, draw from life from your own reflection.
there's this thing I do with friends during the day when I paint. I'm in a hangout with them, mm -hmm. and they're all painters as well. Ah, okay. So, so very often when we need to have a facial expression, it's like, oh, can you guys just, you know, look really happy? And then you <laughs> see like six happy faces. <laughs> like, yeah, stand still. Keep it like that. Yeah, perfect. That's right, Watson. There's also the recertification. I don't remember now every how many years, but of course, recertification is just, you know, proving that, you know, you know about the new stuff. And Mel, um, I'm not sure if, you know, if, if it's specific goes into 3D or, or things like that, but there's a really good outline uh, that you can have a look at. Everybody's very interested in the certification exams today. <laughs> Looking at the one from yesterday, it's more like shock rather than a scream. So yesterday, hmm. today. I do you think the jaw can be better? What and about? Örjan Svensson. Those hangout guys sound super cool. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of those. He's one of those. Yeah. yeah. I I guessed. I guessed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we could have used that technique today. Yeah. Yeah. Just hop in and hang out. Have Urian come in and make faces. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to tag along. He's like, Titus isn't coming with you? Ah. Let me pre pretend ah. to be Titus. <laughs> <laughs> Titus, Titus, Titus. I'm not sure you want to be in Paris right now. It's so hot outside. Yeah, it's too warm. It's way too warm. region. Orian says too much facial hair to be like Titus. Or... Oh yeah, <laughs> he has a beard. beard. Wow, Norway is scorching 18 degrees. Wow, <laughs> so <Wow>. warm. <laughs> Don't go outside. Yeah, careful now. Yes, Marcia Blanco, there will be replays. So we've been here yesterday, we'll be here today and tomorrow with Suzanne and um, other three guests, uh, which I can actually, let me just uh, put them in order here. Uh, we're gonna be back here um, uh, in about an hour and 15 minutes with uh, Sébastien Hu, uh, and then with Therese Larsen. And tomorrow for our last day of this digital illustration stream, we will have the all of our guests again, starting with Kyle Webster, maker of the Kyle brushes, uh, Suzanne Helmich, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Sebastian Hu, and Therese Larsen. So all the replays will also be available uh, as soon as we're done. So, um, but if you want to see the replays from yesterday already, they're already here, available on adobelive.com. Down below on the right, there is a uh, button that says replays. And they're all there, see? Yeah. Instantly, right after the stream. Right after a few the stream. minutes, yep. and it's there. I like that, that this whole group all have a different speciality. Because mm -hmm. Sebastian is all about the environment concept art. Okay. And sci-fi, mostly. Mm -hmm. Whereas Teresa is all about yeah. uh, animals. animals. Yes. I love her animals. Do you see her horse yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> But I saw her, when we set everything up, she's like, oh, I just want to test this Wacom. And uh -huh. within five minutes, she drew like <laughs> six different animals. And I was like, whoa, how do you do that? Because mm. I did this thing with other artists and none of us had ever drawn a horse in our entire life. So we challenged each other without looking at a photo, just draw a horse on the spot. Mm. It looks horrible. Even though all just of us are professional artists, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, yours look like a donkey. That's more a dog. Uh, Don't know what that's supposed to be. 
Yeah, in Paris right now it's 37 degrees. That's pretty hot. And just when we leave, it cools down. It goes to like 26 or 25. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. Yeah, I don't think there's any warmer place in Europe right now. I kept checking. Rome is less warm, oh. Croatia, Spain. It's all less warm than Paris. when I'm uh, starting to change something, I do a new layer, I do all the drawing, and when I'm happy, I merge them together. So, in case I'm not happy... Titus is saying, no, not the horse story. Not the mine, horse story. Mine just looked like a weird hyena dog. Yeah, <laughs> that was true. Yeah? Yeah. When he was attempting to draw a horse? Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though he's a great artist, <laughs> but... Uh, show you. He does really nice environments as well. And Cassandra is asking, where do you find groups of friends like that? Facebook, I guess. Mm. We all knew each other from Facebook. So he can draw stuff like this, but then a horse? A horse is hard. This is no problem. But a horse was hard for me as well. But again, I, I want to mm. challenge Therese to, to do an environment. Mm -hmm. Ah, she does. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the thing. As an artist, it's it's hard to master everything. There will always be a few things you can get really good at if you put enough time in it. But everything, that is a rare thing to achieve. Yeah, Marcia Blanco, I know that Phoenix is in a heat wave as well. You know that they even grounded all the planes because it's too hot for planes to fly. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. That's not fun. That's no question. Is that just a random Facebook group? Um, no, I think it started happening where if you know one artist and you go through their friends and you see, oh, that's an artist too. Just talk to them and add them. Just be super social. That way you get to know more people and it has this snowball effect. I had this time some years ago where I added 10 artists and then I got friend requests back from other artists. And before I know it, I had 5,000 people in my friends list and it was full. It only took a few months. Social media has been really good for that. Karen Rhodes says, not enough anger in his eyes. But is he angry or is he just screaming? Is he... Hmm. I think he looks angry, but maybe... Is he saying... Yeah! Or is <laughs> no! he saying... Mother! <laughs> what is he saying? I don't know, let's, let's think of some... Dog, things. come here! <laughs> uh, yeah, it does sound like he's angry at a dog, so it doesn't want to be too mean. Maybe his dog is changing a bird. He's like, no! Yeah. Don't kill the, the bird. bird! Yeah, stop it! Go against your nature! <laughs> so what was, uh, Fink does is asking, what was, um, was there one point where your work was noticed by clients and companies started noticing you? Yeah. Hmm? Okay, that's not fair. I'm not gonna just answer. Yes, <laughs> that's it. The rest is secret. Yeah, um, I started my career with my first job in 2010, so seven years ago. And that was for a mobile developer with this really small game. It wasn't a big success, but before and after that, it was still really hard to get myself out there. And I would just 
send my portfolio to about 50 different companies in one day. Just take the day, find all these emails and send it out to them. And most of the time I would hear nothing back because I wasn't crazy good yet. I mean, it was my first year. I was pretty young, I was uh, 20. So the usual response from companies is, oh, that's pretty young. Maybe maybe you should intern. But no, I want a job. So that that gives you this, this endless cycle of, oh, how can I be good enough if I'm not getting hired? <laughs> and I'm not getting hired because I'm not good enough. So I found a loophole in that together with some other friends who were in the exact same situation of not getting a job. We formed a company together mm -hmm. and we tried to build our own game. Mm -hmm. But before we could even finish our game, we were hired. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so we had something to show for in our portfolio. We had yeah. some experience. Tomoyo says, looks like he hit his pinky. That's why he's screaming. <laughs> or that moment you stand on the Lego brick. Lego brick, yep. Maybe I should have Titus ref for this. He always stands on Legos and stumps his toe. Instead of going, oh, you're right, I'll be grabbing my <laughs> camera and hold that. Got it. Uh, but to finish that, after doing some studio work over the years, the longer I worked, the more people approached me and the less I had to approach companies. So it's all a bit about mm. uh, word of mouth. I think that's the saying. Yeah. Is great. The phrasing. So it gets better. If you're new in the industry, it won't always be such a struggle to get jobs. Eventually get the ball rolling. So Pink Dad is saying, I'm trying to move my career to mobile app illustra illustrator icons, concepts, but I have a few years to go and practicing to really make it. Yep, practice is what it takes. Yeah. And passion, never give up. Oh yes. I mean, the moment you give up, then you already put like a, a dot at the end mm. of your career. And that's it. Yeah, and Eric is asking, I see you are in 8-bit. When is 16-bit needed? Am I 8-bit? Mm -hmm. Is that the standard setting? I guess. Hmm. I think I'm usually. I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> Let's see. I think it says so somewhere here. No, it's in the document. Um, it's image mode. 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 okay. bits. That's actually a good question, and I don't think I know the right answer to that. Yeah. To be correct. I only know the difference between uh, RGB and CMYK. Or CMYK uh, is, is, to put it shortly, it's better for printing. Whereas if you work in RGB, that is color meant for your screen, so for a light source. And CMYK is a color profile meant to be printed on paper. And paper is not a light source. Yes, but I would always work on RGB. Yeah? Yes, because you have a much bigger color spectrum to work with. That is true. And but what then, do you do? And then paper? you control the output to make it okay. look as close as possible to your illustration. But never give up your colors. Let me see if I have my little app here. It's called uh, the uh, Profile. No, what is it called? Color. Color Sync Utility. So I'm just going to move over to my screen here just to show you, Suzanne, because let me see here. Yes. All right. So basically, what you can do is get. Let's get a generic uh, or the Adobe RGB, okay? Mm -hmm. This is the colors that are in the RGB color uh, uh, color spectrum, okay? Yeah. Now let's keep this one for comparison. Mm -hmm. If you work in CMYK, you're losing all of these colors. Oh. Everything that's grayed out, you can't use because it's not in that spectrum. 
This is why I'm a big, big pusher of the RGB only workflow, even for layouts, Photoshop documents, anything. Because we need the colors, because once you reduce it to CMYK, there's no way to, to, get, that back. to get that back, okay? And uh, all modern, modern applications and uh, printing machines are able to really understand the RGB and downgrade it to something that is very similar to, uh, to your RGB image, but yeah. at least you didn't lose the information. That's good to know. Because I had this discussion with a client who outsourced a job to me, mm -hmm. which was a poster for a Lego, a new Lego thing from DC mm. Comics. And I made everything in RGB, and he says, this is great, now switch it to CMYK, because mm -hmm. we want you to work in that. Like, oh, Why? Yeah. Because what you can do, of course, in, uh, in uh, now you're in RGB, mm -hmm. go into view, view, and then say uh, proof setup, or proof colors, I don't, uh, okay, no, uh, proof setup, and I think you can, you can actually um, look at the colors. Oh, but no, are you in RGB? It says what it seems. Oh. Wait. Huh? That is weird. Mm -hmm. I was in RGB. I'm gonna go here. Where were, we, where were we looking earlier? In, in uh, image uh, mode, the first one. Maybe I changed it when I clicked that. No, it says RGB oh, okay, okay. here. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's the um, it's the preview. So if you go to preview, it can say proof colors, and uh, it'll actually show you the, say, the how the image looks in uh, in. Um, uh, in the same way, K. So I switch that on, I assume. Mm -hmm. then... Proof colors. No, it's just underneath. Can you see it? Oh, so it changed when I did that. Yeah, it changed oh. a little. Yeah. Proof colors. Ah, it's very, noticeable. Yeah, very noticeable. Yeah. Let's go see if the chat went crazy. Because <laughs> every time I speak about that, people say, oh. I tried RGB, but ultimately in the end I have to convert to CMYK for printers, otherwise my blacks get really messed up. Well, it depends on the conversion, Justin. It depends on the conversion. Um, Mal export to TIFF or PNG for web, keeps better color info. Yeah, I think the best color info that you'll ever get is your PSD document. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Because that has everything, and uh, um, yes, of course, for the web you need as PNG or JPEG or GIF. So I've switched over to the other image because mm -hmm. I think the other one's kind of saturated on its content. Right here, I'll just make the shadows cooler. Little darker. Giovanni, of course, it needs to be CMYK when it goes to print. But what I what I'm saying is that before you make the plates, everything can be can remain in RGB. And your printer, when he makes the plates, that's when the conversion should happen. <coughs> what if you print at home? You don't print in CMYK at home. No. Or well, it, no, not really. It's. Uh, what colors are there in the printers? It's not CMYK printing. It's it's. What colors do you put in your printer? I don't remember. I gave up. I gave up buying color printers because all my ink always goes dry. So I prefer <laughs> just to go and have people print it out. <laughs> it costs less. I have a printer at home, so I can. Mm print my stuff for our own comic cons and conventions advertise as well mm. and we always have to adjust our images just a little bit I think we have to make them lighter and a little less saturated and mm. then we print it in a way that looks closer to the screen because mm. if we don't adjust anything the darks do go really really dark mm. in this printer 
don't know why. It's always a little bit of a... There you go, feeling. printers are CMYK. Thank you guys. You see, that's how much I know from home printers. <laughs> the reference on for this guy, which are previous drawings I did of him. So I want to know exactly where the skin is. Now I knew that when I did the line drawing, but now that I put the values, values in, we kind of lost like this. one of my own rules. Normally I don't render characters really far before the rest of the characters are on the same level. But I think during these streams I'm gonna try and render this character out to finish so people can see the steps mm -hmm. and see the finished uh, product. What paintbrush are you using right now? Larissa is asking. Uh, that is actually one of the brushes that you can download by clicking on the button. Oh yeah. Yeah. The Kyle uh, brushes, the Edward Monk yeah. uh, brushes, and yeah. And let me just uh, go back here for a second. Let me just uh, pause that the, the video so we don't get confused. Let me just pause it for a second there we go all right so let me move to my screen just for a moment and basically down here there's a button that says monk contest and also here enter the contest and this will bring you to this page the adobe hidden treasures of creativity and basically what happens here is that um, Kyle Webster uh, one of our guests in this uh, digital illustration stream has recreated the brushes that Edvard Munch used uh, to paint the screen uh, for us to use in Photoshop so on that page we can get the brushes we can download them they're free for all of you to use so please download them and try them out they work in Photoshop and in Photoshop CC and in photo, uh, Adobe Photoshop sketch on uh, on mobile devices uh, on tablets uh, so and then we you paint like a master and create your own masterpiece and basically uh, what Kyle also did he did a couple of tutorials here on how to use the brushes and then uh, this is the competition that we invite all of you to participate in by uh, using these brushes and basically we ask you to reinterpret the uh, Edward Monk's screen and there's actually oh Russell Brown is also part of the jury I just noticed Michael Shez, um, uh, Zach McCulloch uh, from Behance Andy Sandoz uh, president of DN DNAD that's cool, all right. And the artists from this stream, Kyle, Therese, Suzanne, and Sebastian Hu. And basically the uh, the grand prize is 6,000 euros in cash, a ticket to attend Adobe Max, which is our biggest Adobe um, creativity conference, which will be held in Las Vegas this year in October. Last year it was in San Diego and there was about 13,000 creatives oh, with us uh, on so site. So that was a huge, huge conference. Uh, so everything included, travel and hotel and everything. A uh, one-year subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud, 100 Adobe stock images. Um, and then, this is super cool, all expenses paid for a trip to Oslo to see the masterpiece displayed in the Monk Museum. Yeah, so, so your yeah. painting mm -hmm. will hang there right next to, to the, the To the screen, to the original screen yeah. by Edward Monk. All right, so please read the official rules and, uh, and how to participate. There's terms and conditions, of course, like uh, with all um, um, contests. So make sure to read the official rules and uh, to see if you can if you can participate. And I would love you to participate. Can my friends participate? Absolutely. Okay. 
That's right, Diego. 6,000 euros to spend in Las Vegas. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I hope not. Because you know that all the money you spend in Las Vegas, you lose in Las Vegas. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Is it just going to be one winner then that gets all the things? Yes, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's, that's what I get, what I understand, yes. I thought it was like the number one gets this, number two gets that. No. Wow. That is some jackpot, right? The grand there. winner who will receive, yes. The winner, not the winners. The winner. Singular. Wow. Well, Suzanne is not using a laptop. She's using a Wacom Cintiq that's hooked yeah. up to a Mac yeah. Pro. Yes. Yes. Which is not what I work with at home, but I'm used to it. I worked in various different companies where Mac was the standard. I think the biggest difference for me with home and this is that at home I pretty much sit in the dark. Mm. We have a lot of light here. There's a lot of light in yeah. the studio, that's right. Feel my vampire instincts coming up like Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> start burning. <laughs> Yes, Carol Titus, I completely agree. I think every designer would need to work at a printer's as a first job. You learn so much about file setup, color, etc. I did it mid-career, found I was setting my files up pretty f and found that I was setting my files up pretty flawlessly. Yes, and uh, this is something that unfortunately does not get taught enough in schools, uh, in design schools. You know, you learn all about creativity and uh, um, design and things like that and I think the production part is super important and this is why I'm so confident to say that a, a RGB workflow actually works because I've seen it at work and uh, I've actually applied it pretty early on when it was introduced uh, maybe at, in the late uh, late 2000s um, um, so yeah so maybe uh, like maybe a 10 year 10 15 years ago um, I was using the RGB workflow and it, it works just fine and it and you know an RGB image also weighs less than a CMYK oh. image yeah because it has three layers three color information right and oh, CMYK yeah. has four color information the coding is easier. so you're even even saving space on your computers and um, and uh, actually uh, the cool thing is that um, that printers were actually making discounts for my customers because they knew that the files come, came from me and ah. that I knew what I was doing because I was certified, <laughs> a certified <laughs> expert and because, uh, yes, I was very interested to see how these uh, modern workflows were actually working. So I just switched brushes to one of my own because it has this really nice blending mode that I'm used to. Much uh, softer touch. Whereas the moon brushes are very much more secure and daring. This one's all Heaven, awesome. yeah, it would be nice to get a job there with that experience too. Like nowadays they ask you for 10 years experience, no five languages and dead language and sacrifice a unicorn. That's right. <laughs> That's what's that what it takes to get a job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Actually, you know, getting a job is uh, has a lot to do also with um, uh, how can I say it? Um, like how bad, how how bad you want it, um, because this actually um, you know influences your choices, influences how you how you uh, apply for the job, how serious you sound at the job application, and uh, and yes, you know, experience can be can be can be many things. Oh, thank you, Adam. No, like the original hipster of the RGB workflow. <laughs> Me. <and Adam. laughs> I'm 
trying to find all the right values for this guy right now. I like the balance between what needs to be dark, what needs to be light. Am I losing too much of his expression or the story I want to convey? Because initially I want everything to look as realistically as possible when it comes to colors and lighting, but sometimes you have to stage it a little bit. It's just like what they do in movies. <laughs> they set up this extra light, so... So Helen Hannon says, next time I will camp outside the print shop so they know how bad I want it. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, of course, you know, one essential factor is, do they have an opening? <laughs> like, do they need someone else? Yeah. That's also... Uh... But if they're looking... That seems pretty important. <laughs> Imagine if someone just... Yeah, I want a job. Them. We don't have yeah. one. I want it anyway. Give it. I sacrificed the unicorn. <laughs> no, please don't. We have no job. I already did. <laughs> Here's the corn. <laughs> Another little thing I do, whenever I'm happy with faces and where they're going, I'm working really big. I think this was about almost 8,000 pixels wide. However, when I zoom in on a small t detail like this, this is a 100%. And that's, for me, in my personal taste, not nearly big enough to get the right details right. So I don't want to blow up my entire image to make it even bigger, but sometimes stuff like faces and heads, I will just select it enhance it, make it a lot bigger so it gets a little fuzzy and blurry, paint over it until it's super tight and beautiful, and then make a copy of that, mm. shrink it down. Mm. So it looks really, really crisp. Now the man she's painting is not Rufus on his knees, no. <laughs> no. But I'm really hopeful that I will be added on the horse that, um, you know, that was being painted by, uh, by Therese. Yes. The epic horse and I want to be sitting on the horse going like this <laughs> it's a really nice statues of that in the armory museum hmm of horsemen yeah nice armor and beautiful pose of these marble horses hmm. their rear legs there's also a lot of music because there's this uh, official first day of summer right now. Oh. So there's live music in a lot of places. Oh, that's what they were preparing at the Defense this morning. Mm -hmm. But I guess when we get out of here at midnight, everything will be over. Oh, uh, yeah, probably. It's really nice in the museum though. I really love live classical music. So as I entered, there were armors everywhere and that already makes my uh. my eyes sparkle and then there was live music and I thought, oh, this, is this a radio? It sounds really nice. The, the, the acoustics and then I looked around the corner and there was this entire orchestra <laughs> just sitting amongst the armor and I thought, oh, this is a perfect day. I do not want to change a thing. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they also have a pretty incredible armory museum in Amsterdam as well, no? Or in club? No? Not really, actually. No? no, we don't have a lot. We have uh, one museum that has some armor, but it also has a lot of paintings. Oh, okay. Not, not one specialized in armor, sadly. And Mel is cleaning her teaching lab and listening to our guide, to us. And she said, it's way, way better than music while I clean. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaning up for the summer, Mel. School over. Just want to copy the guy. Line art. bigger and then paint that out nicely. Now 
Oh, the incoming summer semester, that's right. Now the summer semester start. Aren't they having a holiday right now? Yeah, but maybe it's just like a special semester with special courses. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that face is super big. And now I can get into the finer details. Maybe I should still have. So this is just a character when he's in prison, so he's looking really rough. Whereas later in the book, he saw short hair, wearing nice clothing. It's like Thor. Thor has short hair in the new Thor. I saw that. What? Yeah. That, that cannot be. Yeah. There must be a backstory to the short hair, otherwise. Well, I think they, they, they cut his hair because they kidnapped him and want him to fight in the arena. So they oh. gave him this Mako for it to look to their oh, liking. Oh, okay. Yeah. I read a lot of comic books. Okay. Oh, so, <laughs> so it's actually a story from a comic book? I think so. I, they make them, I know I know it's a comic book but it, that, do the do the stories are other films always based on, on they, an they, they use parts of it but they changed a lot of things mm. Adam is asking do you ever use smart objects for your characters smart objects mm -hmm. um, sometimes if I get a lot of layers I will turn them into smart objects mm -hmm. just to keep my files a little bit more clean. But it's not very often. I get a lot of layers when I work for clients because they want me to be able to change things forever. But in my own projects, I tend at some point to just merge a lot of things, mm -hmm. keep everything clean. I do this a lot, so I would make a new layer and link it to whatever I'm working on instead of directly working on that layer. When I'm happy, it gets merged. I'm gonna do this brown slide that comes in at the bottom. Ooh, I think I can actually use an image where he's all cleaned up that I got on here. But it has similar lighting because I love Torchlight. Because <laughs> this is the same then, but then after he's seen like a ah. hair salon. Copy, but it's. <laughs> Is it in French? French? Yeah. Oh. That's fine. gonna stage a bit of the lighting and make sure there's some sort of spotlight just like this guy is having right there there is a different setting current and below all layers aha otherwise you're not picking the right color Still. Have you used the light lighting effects to to try lights? Um, I do that occasionally, but then I would have to start with flat colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gives a pretty good idea. At this point, I've already delved into mm. putting some values down there. So if I put levels layers on this, it's going to break anything I've done before. 
just using some of the colors that I had in my previous drawing. Some of the bright yellows. Uh, okay, Mel. Wow, that's a that's a busy schedule. I'm at I'm at the university teaching Adobe, web design, code, and Excel. I have a Photoshop class at one, so I'll have to check the next one on replay. So they do have their Photoshop certificate, then. They teach it. Hmm? They must have a Photoshop certificate now. Ah, yes. <laughs> Teachers in chat, I see. So I'm teaching Excel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mel is also teaching Excel. Well, you know, like making spreadsheets is something that everybody can use eventually. Yeah. <laughs> right? Whether you use Excel or Google Sheets or whatever. Or what is the Apple thing called? Numbers? Oh, yeah, I think so. I've seen people do creative illustration using Excel. Yeah, I've seen that too. It's kind of like pixel art, but then with symbols. Mm -hmm. Even That's animations. Funny. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is that when you scroll down? Yeah, and something mm -hmm. happens, yeah. Uh, oh, look at this one. <laughs> wow, that's an Excel? Yeah. With, I guess, like, like pixel art. So move weird. over here. Yeah, weird stuff. Oh, this one's crazy. Oh. Wow. Excel art. Yeah, well. I'm mostly impressed with how much time that probably works. Very time consuming, I yeah. think. So this level of detail I'm applying is not something you get when you work really tiny. And Maggie's asking, what are some tips to organize your layers when you have a document with so many? You know, I use folders and always name them, but I don't usually assign colors. When do you assign colors to layers? Uh, hmm. I, well, this is less colors than I usually use. At home, they're all color coded because I'm dyslectic. But I think I, whenever I name a layer, I also give it a color. And I have different colors, like, uh, this is the folder with all the references, mm -hmm. this is the folder with the characters, folder with background, folder with fire effects, that sort of thing. This make, makes everything a lot easier. But there's no go-to rule, like when to and when not to, really. I, yeah, I guess it's like a gut feeling, right? Oh, I need yeah. to organize this piece or that. Yeah. So that's just like your desk. Yeah. You know, you can choose to make a little pile there on the side <laughs> or not. <laughs> Sorry Nils, let me see if I can turn it down, but I cannot remove the music. I always forget there is music. Yeah. Let me see if I can does the music come? Can you talk to them? La 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 la. Test, test. All right. I'm upping the volume for you. It's never too late to become an Excel artist. Good to know. Gonna expand my career. Mm. 
I love this. I'm always flipping around. Before that was a thing, because I think... Oh god. How many versions ago? Maybe four versions ago in Photoshop. You couldn't do this just yet. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I would just tilt my head all the time. <laughs> Tilting the head is what um, uh, what Therese does. Yeah. She never uses that. She what? said no. She never rotates the canvas. Why? She just she flips it to have another to have another view to of the of the image. Huh. Did she give a reason for that? Well, I don't know. Maybe she never. No. Well, maybe. She, no, she no specific reason. Just that she never does it. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. HCK is asking greetings from Burma. Just popped in. Fell in beauty. Fell in love. Fell, fell for the beauty of the artist. Got a question. <laughs> Don't you use blending features to lighten or darken the piece, or just use the reference color, Suzanne? Uh, in this case, I am just. I made most of the palette from the get go, and now I just grab some of my older palette. But in other times, I use flat colors, and then I use levels layers. To do the mm. lighting. So I switch out my technique now and then. So there's, uh, you know how to say, there's multiple roads to Rome or all the roads lead to Rome, something like that. There's a, a few different ways of doing things. So I think that's actually something I could show where with this I instantly go for the values and I paint everything then maybe tomorrow I will actually show that where I apply the flat colors and then do the, the levels layers. And Diego is asking and we don't need to go into financial um, uh, details here but if you have to plan a comic or graphic novel with a lot of paintings um, is that is that worth it financially or um, is that something? I, I feel like I can only answer that once my book is released. Okay so you haven't done one for others? Mm, only companies. Like but a that's publisher different. maybe asking you to to illustrate a story of theirs? No? Mm, no, no, only only for companies. I mean, it's different for big companies because they can take the risk of mm. multiple investments. But as an individual artist, I think the most important thing is that if you can afford it in your life, you must chase your dreams and do what you love. And this is what makes me really happy. So even even if this doesn't sell and people are like, ah, oh, this is boring, I will still feel happy because I did my thing. But I don't know, maybe maybe I become a millionaire mm. and there will be yeah. movies and everything. Who knows? Who knows? There you go. Yeah. That would be fun. Or maybe I'll get to hang in a museum next to a master painting. But if it's worth it, that that's just up to to you, really. Yeah. And Dorina is asking, did you use separate layers for the segments of the character? For example, one layer with color of the shirt, one color, one for the bottoms, one for the hair, uh, or do you paint the entire clothing in one layer, hair in another layer? The whole character is one layer. Mm. Well, in this case, two because mm. I I paint a little bit, I merge it. I paint uh -huh. a little bit, I merge it. So I don't separate them that much. And that's only because I have want to keep control of my edges. Mm -hmm. If I separate everything in masks, all the edges will become super tight and crisp. And that's not very beautiful. You want something to be very sharp and crisp when it's important. So let's say there's a face and... Oh, maybe that one actually has it. I'll show it. The darker side of that face is pretty sharp and that's because there is some like almost black behind it whereas within the face I want everything to be soft and everything to have gradual gradients really and then here back in the neck it's it's pretty harsh again but if you have all your edges sharp it will look really unnatural like kind of 
plastic-like. And if you want to go for that painterly look, sometimes it's really nice to blend part of the character with the environment as well. So anything that's not important, give it less brush strokes. I always tell people as well, like, you go for tiny brushes for faces that are important and for hands, and you only use big brushes for places that you shouldn't put mm -hmm. too much detail to. So a lot of these feet down here will only be a very limited amount mm -hmm. of brush strokes. Yeah. It's like, it's like when uh, one thing that always comes up in these streams is like, uh, how big does my document have to be if I have to make a poster that goes on a bus? You know, it doesn't have to be the size of the bus. <laughs> no. uh, many people actually think, uh, why does an illustrator make document the size of a bus? Because it doesn't need to. Uh, even Photoshop doesn't need to. Because basically what you need is, is just an image that is, you can blow it up and up. I mean, if you go close to these large images, they're all blurry. They're, all, they're, they're not perfect. Uh, the the important thing is that they look good, you know, from from a distance. And that's how you would see a bus or a poster uh, on a big wall. And uh, so the document size does not necessarily need to be the size of uh, what it's being printed for. Yeah. Thomas says you really draw like Rembrandt, from dark to light. I do, and thank you. That's a compliment. He also, uh, Thomas also said Rembrandt would hire you for his paintings. <laughs> Let's say Rembrandt would have hired you for your painting, for his paintings. <laughs> wow, I'm so flattered right now. Don't make me blush. That would be epic. I, I love his paintings. I mean, we have a lot of them in my country because he is Dutch. Mm -hmm. And he is really, really good with lighting. I used to study some of his works just to be able to understand how he does that. There's this really famous painting of him, uh, of this old nun holding a book in her hand, and all the light comes from the bounce light uh. of the book, and it's so beautiful. I don't know what it's called though. But it's great. Yep, dark to light is the oil oil way. Now that I've got this in a little bit, I want to see what it looks like when I make it small. Merge layers. Copy it. I think I made it 400%, which means that if I it down to 25 it should have its original size Apply. And I'll move to the round one bit. and Diego's asking what what are your references or favorite artists Ooh. well I never use my favorite artists as reference mm. But I think I know what you're trying to say there. Basically asking what are my favorite artists. And also that I don't have specific artists that are my absolute favorite. There's a lot of artwork that are my favorites though. Because I think there's no artist out there to whom I like every piece of artwork that comes out of them. And just to name some names that I really like, let's see. Um, there's this one called Tyler Jacobson. He also works for Magic the Gathering, like I do. And it's just a really great example with how to work with color and mm. light and brush efficiency. I actually learned a lot of things by just looking at his work and then zooming in, like, how did he do that? How did that work? And I grew up with looking at stuff from Frank Facetta. So it's like a really old school artist. I think that was the person or the artist that triggered wanting to do art for me. The little girl that wanted to draw heroes and monsters. See, um, but now that I made it small, I instantly mm -hmm. see like, huh, there's not a lot of light on the tip of his nose there. It's not very clear. So I still have the big one and I can make that lighter, but maybe 
right next to the nose to make the nose more readable. I can make his clothing a little darker. So it's all color relation. I try to not make anything too dark, except for maybe the black hair right here. And this is almost as, as dark as I get it. I don't want to reach anything at the bottom here. Because when you do that, and when you're there, there's no information anymore. So if you were to use Lemos layers, it's not going to change anything because uh, it's just lacking info. Rob says that he went to the Rem Rembrandt exhibit at the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam years ago. Absolutely amazing, standing feet away from the masterpieces. The detail is better than most photographs even today. Yeah, hmm. I think so as well. There's also this really nice painting uh, in the Tate Museum in London. Uh, if Titus is still there, he'll know what I'm talking about. It's this very dramatic piece where the earth is opening up and uh, there's thunder everywhere and people are falling into the earth. It's like hmm. representing damnation upon okay. people. And I've only seen that really small on the internet. But then hmm. when you're in a museum, there's oh. this huge canvas and it's absolutely haunting, I want to say. It's terrifying. And then to think of it, back in those days, they didn't have TVs or anything, so that came as close to seeing something that was not real become reality. What would be your favorite artists? Uh, now, I think maybe my favorite... My favorite art group is the, the Futurists yeah. from the beginning of last century, yes. Okay. Yeah, because they really inspired me. They really inspired my my whole, you know, love for art history and love for um, and basically they inspired. They in, they didn't even know it, but they inspired the whole generations to come with you know with modernism and things like that. So Giacomo Balla was my favorite artist ever. And what does his his work look like for those who don't know? What There's the many different styles. So basically, it also starts with very figurative art, and then uh, towards the end of his life, it was very about very much about futurism and uh, uh, the speed and light and things that were never explored before. So okay. yeah, I'm pretty sure you know some of the paintings. Let's see if we can find some images. See these paintings here, like it was like. Oh yeah. This is the first like to experiment. Oh, this one is of the violin is incredible. No, that's that's the that's not the violin. That's the um that's the birds flying. Oh wow. Uh, just oh yeah. that's the, I love this wagging dog, <laughs> uh, because it like got all the movements yeah. in, in a, inside of a single painting. That was super interesting. How does he get it so tight? Does he does he use like measuring equipment for that? No, no, no. Whoa! So it's like freehand. Yeah, and wow. this one is uh, what me. Oh, this one is the girl on the balcony is also very famous. It's like decomposing the movement of this girl crossing on the balcony. Yeah, it takes a while before you notice it. If you didn't say it was a girl, I would mm -hmm. think like what? what am I? Hmm. And, Somehow, some of the pieces I see makes me think of Escher pieces. Are, are they mm. from the same era? Oh, this one is also very like capturing the light that comes from the lamp. It was crazy stuff. Wow. Boom. That's really cool. So then you've probably been to the modern museum, the modern Tate Museum. Yes, yes. <laughs> And there was also in the late 80s, there was the first ever exhibition of futurist art in Venice. Um, um, after the first exhibition after the Second World War. And uh, because basically what happened is that then Mussolini liked them a lot and a lot of them became like involved in fascism. Um, and that gave them a bad name, of course. Yeah. Uh, and it was actually the first time that the art was res had resurfaced and uh, was, had nothing to do with fascism. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because with Munch it went the opposite way. Mm. His type of art was actually uh, announced to be non-art mm -hmm. during the World War and uh. Germany took it out of the museum to destroy a lot uh -huh. of it. So what he did, he 
whatever he had in his environment, he hoarded in one home mm. and locked it down. And obviously, like mm. sitting on top of his own trash, he's like, "Don't mm. touch my art." Until the end of the war, they uh, they were friendly with him, so they didn't destroy his art. That's why a lot of it still exists. I also read, at least on Wikipedia, that the scream that they have in a museum. There is another one, really famous, with a little mm. bit more color that there's they don't a, have in a museum. There's, a, in a, there's a few one. ones, right? There's, yeah. I think there's like three or four. But a prettier one is in someone's private collection. It actually says uh, here collection. in... Uh... Where is it? I'll find it. I'll, you can go ahead with your <laughs> painting while I find the information. I'm curious if Titus also set the painting that I meant earlier ah, with the I'll, I'll go find it. Alright. Oh, Titus says just hey, uh, tackle boys. <laughs> Let me see if I said anything else. Great Day of His Wrath. Yes, that's what it's called. John Martin. It is beautiful. Yeah, there's a li linoleum cut of the scream as well, like a lino cut. This, I don't know if it's lino or if it's wood, wood print. And there's so many years in between yes, the making. And there's things. so many copies and so many people. And now there's going to be even more people because people <laughs> there is this competition going on. I'm just going to go back to my screen very quickly, and I'm going to last time I'm going to talk about it during this uh, in today's uh, stream with Suzanne is uh, on AdobeLive.com. There's these buttons down here. Enter the contest and Monk contest, which bring you to this page here: the hidden treasures of creativity. And basically, what happens here is that we've asked Kyle Webster to recreate some of the brushes that Edward Monk. Uh, used to paint the screen, right? So, of course, the Monk Museum in Oslo uh, was so kind to uh, provide Kyle with all of the information that he needed to recreate those brushes, even provide Kyle with some uh, background texture to make it feel like the brushes are being used on, um, on Monk's uh, paintings. And basically on this website you can download those brushes, they're free for everybody to use, so go get them. Uh, they work in Photoshop CC and Photoshop uh, Sketch on uh, on your mobile uh, tablets, and then we ask you to make a to paint like a master, and that you can learn here. Kyle has prepared some of, some tutorials to uh, to paint like a master, to paint a self portrait, and to give your artwork an antique look with Adobe Stock. Then, uh, of course, you you uh, there's th this competition going on. There's the, the link to the official rules here. Please read them before you participate. There's also terms and conditions. But basically, um, uh, the key takeaway here is that there is a grand prize, which is incredible. It's uh, 6,000 euros in cash, a one-year subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud, 100 stock images, all expenses paid for a trip to Adobe Max in Las Vegas in October, uh, including the ticket. Uh, Adobe Max is our biggest conference uh, here at Adobe in San Diego last year. We had about 13,000 uh, creatives all in one place. It was in an incredible feeling. And last but not least, uh, all expenses paid for a trip to Oslo to see the masterpiece displayed in the Monk Museum. So basically, the masterpiece that will be chosen will be displayed next to the uh, um, uh, Monk's scream in the Monk Museum in Oslo. And that was also that's also a uh, a trip that is being paid by the prize. So make sure to participate. All of the information is down here, like I said, on adobelive.com, adobelive.com, the Monk contest and enter the contest. And this is the biggest jackpot ever, right? For any yeah, of the that's, contests. That's, that's uh, pretty incredible. Yeah. And, and Suzanne here will be, uh, will be one of the judges. So yes. yep. Be nice to Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Subscribe to my website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she will be checking. Yes. No. <laughs> but yes. No. Maybe. No, I think it will probably just be 
looking at people's ideas and their originality. The trip to, to Norway to the museum is an awesome price by itself. That's right, Ryan. <laughs> I think each of those things are an awesome price by itself. That's why I thought mm -hmm. that would be multiple yeah. winners. I think a different thing. That's like winning the jackpot, getting mm -hmm. a car, getting that fridge, yep, yep. as well as a holiday. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. One person? Whoa. <gasps> and we have four more minutes, Suzanne. And remember, when Suzanne is done here, the replay will be available on adobelive.com. And uh, we will be back with Suzanne, of course, tomorrow at the same time, uh, which is... Uh, I always have to remember from uh, six, 6 to 8, 8 p.m. Yes. Uh, Central European time. So 6 to 8, that's 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Yeah. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific time. So let's wrap up on uh, on your painting here. Yeah. So thanks for. Are, are you still uh, working on the big version of the yeah, head? This yeah, this is the mm -hmm. big version. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I'll be showing uh, how to do it. Uh, with levels, so it's a different way of painting, getting a similar result. So, so far, thanks for hanging out and stick mm -hmm. around. Yeah, no, no, we still have a few more minutes. Oh. Yeah, 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 we uh, can, okay. we can continue. Uh, you, you, uh, you've, you've placed the head down already. Yeah, that is the okay. previous version, but I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna drop the new one in mm -hmm. as well. Just wasn't sure about the light. Uh, Sam saying, I saw another comment that some people, they say they can't get all the brushes. Please let me know if there is more than four brushes that show in my Photoshop. Well, no, actually look at the tutorials because it explains everything. Okay. It's also in the presets. It's, yes. uh, and, there's a checkbox to display all. and there's a checkbox to display them all. So Sam pack, please, uh, look at the tutorials and check them out. All right. Yes. So of course on the, um, the, uh, Photoshop sketch version, there's fewer brushes because uh, in Photoshop sketch doesn't support the um, uh, the mixer brushes that Photoshop does so um, so that maybe you're talking about that Sam pack but yeah check out the tutorials that's why we have tutorials there yes, uh, yes uh, that's why oh, okay. yes mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and Thomas says bye bye Suzanne for today and a thousand thanks for all the tips yay thanks for hanging out well we see mm -hmm. you again tomorrow though yeah, absolutely. And there's last things. Oh yes, there are. Thank you, Jan Eric. Thanks, Count Zero for. Uh, oh yes, it need to be a great work. The jury is wide, and it will be hard to convince everybody. That's right. Yes, <laughs> it was. It will be a tough jury. Oh yeah. Especially because Michael Shays is in it as well. So. Yeah, he's he's known as something, somebody being very, very, very critical. Yeah, can you hear him laughing in the background? <laughs> yes, that's, that's Michael Chase right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, we will be right back with um, uh, Sebastien Hu, who is going to start uh, was starting on a new project using stock imagery to create in an incredible illustration. Uh, and then for the night shift, uh, we will be back here uh, with uh, Therese Larsen from Sweden and we will work on a new animal, I believe. Yesterday she created an incredible horse that uh, she just started sketching po -po 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 little lines on the screen and suddenly it became a fully fledged horse in under two hours. So make sure to, to stay tuned for Sebastian coming up right now and then Therese um, uh, in a couple of hours and tomorrow everything starts again with Kyle Webster, Suzanne Helmich, uh, uh, Sebastian Hu and uh, Therese Larsen again. Okay, so stay tuned. We will be right back and let me see. Uh, and.